So what is going on guys? I am Black Ops Amazing. Welcome back to another Zombies video on the channel. Now whilst we have this break in between DLCs for BO4 Zombies, I thought it'd be a really good idea to go back and take a look at one of our other Zombies storylines. We've had many different interpretations of a zombie story from different studios for Call of Duty, whether it's World War 2 Zombies, Treyarch Zombies, Exo Zombies, Infinite Warfare Zombies. We then also had Extinction, but one of the more interesting ones was in fact Exo Zombies. With a fully fledged storyline, which was actually really interesting, I thought why not go back now that it's been over for a long time and take a look at the Exo Zombies story in full. As always, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like rating if you feel like it. Make sure you are subscribed. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the comments section below. Of course, there's plenty of other modes that we've had in the past, but let's get into it. Here we go. dropped the bomb they hoped it would finish the war. Instead, it unleashed a freak show like no one's ever seen. Three platoons were sent to cage their new pet. Two came back in body bags. An acceptable loss by Atlas standards. Then they brought it here for research. Got to get a return on your investment. No one bothered to tell the rest of us. What the hell? There is no sub-level six. Oh, execs do love their secrets. Oh no. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Arlene, get me security. No. All of it. This is a code three evacuation. Oh. Remember the drill. Stay together, try to... Son of a bitch! No warning. No backup. Approaching the landing zone. No one left. What the hell? Get it off! But us. I fucking hate the Atlas Corporation. When we met, we had only two things in common. The wrong place and the wrong time. When you're facing a thousand mutant zombies eager to spoon out your brains, you learn to work together. Lily shot her first gun that day, like she was born to it. Ah, damn. Heads up. You're welcome. As for Khan, son of a bitch, he got his hands dirty for the first time in his life. Incoming! And Decker enjoyed it all a little too damn much. Take that, you zombie shit! Woo! We were lucky to have found each other, but our luck was running out as fast as our ammo. Shit! What now? You still got your fist! And your teeth. Oh, no! No! Get off me, mother! Yeah? You want a piece of me, you maggots? Come on! We should have died right then and there. But Atlas was all of a sudden feeling generous. Stabilizing. There is stasis. Prep for transport. I don't know how long we were out. But it was long enough for things to go from bad to worse. That's what. Damn it, I told you. This is fucking 
did a real number on your heads, didn't they? It's nothing personal. But one of you has to go. One shot to the head. My head. And the fog lifted. His name is Lennox. Works for Sentinel. They think they're the good guys. You bastard! You shot Oz! That thing you call Oz? He's the source of the infection. A bullet's not gonna stop him. What the fuck are you talking about? The man is dead. Well, so were you once. And you. And you. You see a pattern here? He ain't no zombie! Ow! Alice inbound. Five miles from closing. Ah, they're early. Load him up! We trusted you! Move out! Dead or alive, we were Atlas's prized pets. Lennox knew they'd do anything to get us back. What nobody factored was one of the pets was about to slip his leash. That did it. This ship's about to become one big tax write-off. <laughs> Who pays taxes? Hey, no one gives a fuck, okay? We got two minutes before we're all guzzling seawater. Move! Oz is dead. That asshole shot him. It's just another stupid zombie. Let's just go already. Come on, people. We don't have time for this. Shit. The Atlas infection blazed like a firestorm across the Western Hemisphere, consuming everyone and everything in its path. And I was the match those fucks had used to start it. Uh -huh. I just couldn't remember any of it till now. Shit! This place is coming apart! Take him down! But you can't stop being what you truly are. Come on! Go, go, go! Even if it's a monster. Lucky, take a good look at us. Look, if we survive, chances are Oz did too. We gotta be sure. So what happens if we find him? I think we, we all know the answer to that one, though. We picked up some close chatter. We think it's an Atlas black site. We start there. Atlas had always posed as the savior of mankind while constructing some of the most horrific and lethal weapons to exterminate it, all for cold, hard cash. The only difference being, this weapon came home. End of the line. It's better this way. I am what I am, and what I need to be is deleted from this world. Say goodbye to Big Bad Oz. Wait. I'll do it. Besides, there's only room for one monster in this world. Atlas will pay for what they did to you, Oz. And it had better watch its fucking ass. Lennox got promoted to Lieutenant Colonel for eradicating the source of the Atlas infection. He remains a total dick to this day. But I have to credit Lennox for pulling some strings and getting Decker admitted into Sentinel. Decker finally got his chance to be a proper soldier. He now fights on the front line against his former employer. Tired of the grime and the guns, Khan took up the fight against Atlas the best way he knew how, by suing them. 
the evidence he has amassed for his case is both substantial and damning. Of course, he had a little help from a former Atlas IT employee turned hacktivist. Atlas may stack the jury in their favor, but my bet is Lilith will serve her own brand of justice when she empties all their bank accounts. I still fucking hate the Atlas Corporation. This all began with Atlas. The Atlas Corporation was a private military, a PMC, that was founded and led by CEO Jonathan Irons. It was the largest and most powerful private company in the world. One day, four Atlas soldiers were sent in to contain a prison riot in New Baghdad that had escalated into a full-out war. However, in the midst of the battle, the Atlas Corporation deployed massive amounts of a manticore bioweapon intending to end the battle. Instead, the rioters they killed were reanimated into mind mindless creatures. They were brought back to life as zombies and began attacking the soldiers. The captain of Atlas, Gideon, then arrived to rescue the stranded soldiers. However, the warbird they were in was overrun and Gideon was pulled out of it by one of the zombies. Following the outbreak at the prison, the Atlas Corporation sent in three platoons to contain, in quotation marks, their new pet. Two of them returned in body bags, and unbeknownst to any of the employees' knowledge, several zombies were also contained and taken in secret to an Atlas research lab for further studies. The zombies were hidden away in the secret sub-level 6 of the facility, however, they escaped containment, and a massive outbreak ravaged the facility before anyone knew what was happening. And only four Atlas employees, Oz, who was the maintenance worker, or janitor, Lilf, the IT specialist, Decker, the security guard, and Khan, the executive, remained. Oz witnessed the initial outbreak and was able to escape to safety early, as he was able to gain access to sub-level 6 to clean the floors. After an emergency signal was sent out through the facility, Lil learned of the outbreak while watching the security monitors, and Khan instantly realises what's happening when he's notified of the emergency and takes action. Joined by Decker who managed to outrun the horde, the four survivors expect to be rescued by Atlas support, only to find the incoming rescue warbird is attacked by zombies and crashes right before their eyes. The four untrained survivors then find themselves trapped in the facility and are forced to fight their way out. After deciding that Atlas isn't going to send anyone for them, the four attempt to send out their own rescue signal, using a communication box from the fallen warbird. While attempting to gain clearance, it becomes increasingly apparent to the survivors that someone has set them up and is testing them to see if they can escape. However, when the security is finally bypassed, a pre-recorded voice message tells the survivors that they have passed stage one and have 24 hours to reach the rendezvous point for stage two. A rescue signal is sent out and a new warbird is called in. However, as the new warbird approaches the facility, it is shot down by an orbital drop, leaving the four survivors stranded once again. With the infection now across the entire facility and no hopes of escape, the four survivors are swarmed and overwhelmed by zombies. However, an Atlas VTOL arrives in the nick of time and Atlas employees in hazmat suits transport the survivors in stasis bags in the back of a truck to a shopping district at an unknown location. Over an unknown period of time, the infection eventually spreads to rural America and Atlas sets up a base around the shopping district, trapping the survivors in Burgertown. The survivors wake up and are immediately tasked with rescuing civilians trapped within the vicinity of Burgertown by a warbird operator who goes by the call sign Eagle One who refuses to evacuate survivors as well as cleaning up the zombie horde in the infesting area. They discover that the Burgertown mascot, Bubby, is a highly sophisticated robot. A data card that they find is decrypted inside of the Burgertown tower resulting in a missile being launched from the tower and enabling Bubby to come to life and aid them in the battle. After the group obeys Eagle One's commands to rescue several dozen survivors, Sentinel forces arrive and clean up the last of the undead, but they hold the survivors at gunpoint. Sentinel Captain Lennox, who used the Eagle One moniker to communicate with the group earlier, claims to have been watching them for a long time and declares that one of them has to go. Oz is then executed by Lennox, who insists that he is the source of the infection. Khan denies this, 
but Lennox explains to them that all of these characters, Oz, Lilf, Decker and Khan, were once dead. After telling them this, Lennox then sedates all of the characters, but just before Lilf is sedated, a group of zombies break through the sentinels, forcing Lennox to fight back. After killing the zombies, Lilf is sedated when the sentinel gains word that Atlas is five miles out. Much to Lennox's dismay, claiming that they are early, after loading the four up, Atlas begins chasing the sentinels to a secret aircraft carrier. However, Ozzy's body then reanimates inside of the aircraft, bringing Oz back to life, but now zombified. Upon arriving on the ship, Lennox, Khan, Lilth and Decker fend off against the undead forces, as well as the Atlas strike team who attempt to plant gas bombs and contaminate the ship. While fighting, they discover several diagrams depicting Oz as patient zero, hinting at the possibility of Oz having been experimented on by the Atlas Corporation in the past. Lennox reveals that Oz was in fact a sentinel operative in the past, as well as the fact that Oz was thought to be zombified during the Manticore outbreak at the new Baghdad prison, further prompting the question of whether Atlas made Oz human again. However, it then became apparent to them that Atlas somehow brainwashed Oz into thinking he works as a janitor at Khan's facility, and the outbreak was caused by none other than Oz himself with Atlas having planned all of this the entire time. Lennox also claimed that Lilf, Khan and Decker all have something in their blood that allows them to cure themselves from the infection, making them the solution to ending the zombie outbreak. While navigating through the ship, the group also hears Oz somehow communicating with them through the ship's AI system. But Lennox believed this was due to the GS7 gas, a compound within the manticore bomb that causes hallucination. Eventually, the group find a vault door which leads them into the engine room where they can set up the ship to self-destruct. However, the door is locked and requires four data tablets containing the access code. The group then goes on to find four data tablets and learn through Oz the story of the ship's former captain, DJ, who went missing after refusing to give the access codes of the ship to the crew members. The group enters the engine room, they proceed through the regular ship, they head towards the emergency pod for extraction, and as they prepare to escape, they discover and come face to face with Oz, who is fully reanimated as a zombie, while somehow he's also still able to call out to Lilf for help. The floor below Oz then explodes, he falls through, in which the crew then rushes, they get into the escape pod, and then talk about their next plan, to kill Oz, in which the crew then travel to Atlas's underwater city, the Trident Retreat. Upon landing, they gun down a few of the Atlas soldiers, guarding the retreat, the crew then enters, and they hear Oz call out to them. Oz then teleports them and begins to laugh, taunting them and threatening them with traps. The crew eventually come face to face with zombified Oz, where they defeat him and get teleported out. Later, Oz then speaks to them again, this time in a much deeper voice. The crew then once more get teleported, they come face to face with Oz again, however this time he is huge, mutated and fused. The crew fight Oz, they successfully kill him, Lilth then burns his corpse, however what she doesn't know is that right underneath the crew are hundreds of clones of Oz. And that is where the exo zombie storyline ends. We are left on that cliffhanger. What happens to the crew after this? Do they keep coming face to face with Oz, will we ever know? Are we going to get a continuation? Who knows? However, that is the full storyline of Exo Zombies. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. It's been a long one to make. If you have, you know what to do. Drop a like rating. Only if you want to, make sure you are subscribed. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, goodbye.